I suppose it started in about 2011. Um, it's kind of come out of um, our horticulture project, um, which we actually have ran here since 2009. Um, it employs local people, um, where local people come in and they actually come in and do a full course in horticulture. Some of them then start to progress on to having allotments, um, and some of them have come back and started to work with um, Belly Bay Greens on community employment projects, post projects, volunteers, tutors. Um, so it's had a huge positive impact on the whole state. I started off, I came into Ballybeg in 2010 um, as a student on Level 5, the Horticulture Initiative. Um, so I studied Level 5, finished that in 2011, and then within three months I was brought back as an assistant tutor. Um, I spent 12 months doing that. And then I became, I started running out my own module stem as a full time tutor. And then about 2012, we, Sean came up with the concept of Valley Bay Greens. Um, as I said, I started out the horticulture project. A um, few different things, I suppose. Uh, number one, the students, when we started, we started doing um, VTAC level three courses and then progressed to level four and level five. When we progressed to level four, um, the students were actually starting to propagate plants. So we had all these shrubs, so we had to look at some way of actually selling them. So we decided to open up the garden centre. Um, so that would have started first. And then they started to do organic veg as another module. And then we ended up in a situation where we had all of this organic veg and no outlet for it, so um, there was people taking it home with them initially. And then we had a, a meeting with um, one of the enterprise officers in Waterford, um, who brought out two restaurant tours to us. And we spoke to them and uh, they asked us about um, supplying them. So they gave us a wish list of what they wanted, um, which we duly tore up and started to do a bit of research ourselves on crops which would be which would regenerate very very quickly um, and we started concentrating on salads and then we progressed into looking at edible flowers and then we progressed into looking at herbs um, because i suppose it's kind of irritating when you see that we, we have the weather to produce some of the finest herbs in the world and all the herbs that we have in the country are actually brought in. So we started growing locally and um, we just kind of progressed from there. When I got involved with Valleybed Greens would have been uh, when I came back to Waterford um, and started working here. It, it was a name that was knocked around. I remember when they started up uh, and hearing about them. Uh, and when I took over the kitchen here, it was they were one of the first people I called. Um, just generally from what they did, what they do, who they were, I thought it was brilliant. So um, just through the grapevine, I suppose, is how I heard them and through other chefs and social media. So we started off with the two restaurants and we had the two restaurants and we started meeting with the chefs. And we started, basically it started to go from word of mouth, from chef to chef. And now we've got to a situation where I sit down with some of the chefs um, when they're planning their menus. Um, I sit down, bring in the seed catalogue, ask them what we can grow for them. They do a lot of small vegetables, micro vegetables for us. Um, and like I said, Sean and myself sat down, he had a seed book. And I brought my menus and I said, right, I want this, this, this and this. And he's gone away and hopefully in the next three or four weeks, I'll start seeing the fruits of their labour. Um, and that's, it, 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 as for the product specifically, it's too hard to say. He calls me on a Thursday morning, I say yes to most things and he brings it out. And what he has, we use. We're looking at Valley Bay Greens in the sense of uh, the product range we grow. Uh, it's unusual, it's different to what adding on the south east is to liver. Um, we grow a variety of single leaves rather than lettuces and we blend them ourselves with 
to make some colored cauliflower, some colored carrots, some colored beans. Um, and I suppose because of stuff with the kohlrabis, our stuff it's a bit unusual to what the traditional supplier is delivering. So like that, we're dealing with all the high-end restaurants in Waterford, and all the chefs are very innovative in what they do, and are all the time trying to push new products. So for them, we're a gem, and yet for us, they're a gem. So we're just lucky with the type of chefs we have, and they consider themselves lucky with the supplier that they have. So. Benefits of working with them, for me personally, is, well, one, it, here in the restaurant we are, uh, Predominantly try to use as much local produce as we can. Um, so to, to source that can be a little bit difficult at times. So the benefits for us is that Valley Bed Greens will are local. So they're only down the road from us. Um, working with them, I mean, I've sat down with Sean a couple of times, and, we, and they will grow specific things just for us. So we're quite a large-scale restaurant, so we need a lot of produce, and not a lot of suppliers can keep up with what we do and, and the quality of their stuff. 100% homegrown is local, um, supports local people, keeps the carbon footprint, I suppose, down, which, you know, uh, in kitchens is something we tend to forget about very, very quickly um, when it comes to produce, but uh, the, the, general, the general story behind it, for us, it, it was a no-brainer to be involved with them. Social economy, I suppose, as a, in, as a concept in Ireland, um, is an emerging concept in terms of a kind of a third way between the public and the private um, economy, um, private enterprise and public business, public activity, that the, um, there is a, a third sector that has emerged to a much greater extent in Europe and is now only being recognised, I suppose, in Ireland um, recently as um, a kind of a mixture, as a partnership between the two. So um, the social enterprises operate in the middle between private enterprise and the public sector and um, have a focus on developing a business, but also a business that has a social dividend. While social enterprise has been a buzzword in the Irish um, psyche for probably the last four or five years, um, there's very, very little understanding of it. Um, there's very little government policy. Um, and it was only really when we decided ourselves to actually um, start off as a social enterprise that we actually realised how little source of policy there was there. Um, and taking things like, like um, grant aid, um, we went to the local enterprise office, filled in our, our um, form for grant aid. Um, they gave us the grant, um, but then we threw the grant because we weren't a limited company. Ballybeg Greens emerged from Ballybeg Community Development Project. Um, <clears throat> the project um, has been operational since um, 1991 and came in under the National Community Development Programme, was one of the first projects within that programme um, that was developed when Ireland was in kind of coming out of the, 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 uh, there was the recession in the 80s and there was a recognition that certain communities had been left behind, certain communities, um, both of geographical and communities of interest, were, um, ha had experienced exclusion. And there was an attempt made to develop projects within areas to um, have a developmental response to particular problems, to particular issues that might have emerged. Um, <clears throat> so in Ballybeg, there's a very strong community development ethos and project that has been here since 91. I think we have a, a very good climate for, for social enterprise within the southeast. We're emerging from um, a very deep recession in Ireland as a whole. Uh, the southeast of Ireland, unfortunately, um, is lagging behind um, the rest of the country um, in that regard for various um, reasons. We are now starting to see the, the fruits of the economic recovery, but really over the last number of years uh, social enterprise has had an opportunity, I suppose, to 
um, expand in a climate where uh, there wasn't as many competing um, industries or competing enterprises. So it really has taken hold. Uh, you have some excellent examples in, in Waterford, uh, namely the Ballybeg Greens and of course uh, GIY, fantastic work going on over in Ferrybank. So really, you know, it, it is a good climate um, and hopefully the traction that they've gained during the economic recovery and during the economic recession can be maintained as the economy picks up further. Being involved with um, the, the horticulture project from its outset and the development of Ballybeg Greens as part of that project is um, that, that there needs to be very, very clear commitment and focus to the community. Um, that it certainly at the moment, whilst there is quite a lot of confusion and there isn't a clear policy, I think there can be a tendency or, or there may be a tendency to be pulled into the kind of enterprise, the, the kind of traditional for-profit enterprise sector. Um, and because that is where the focus, that is where the understanding is um, and, and has been. Um, so where you have enterprise officers who have provided support traditionally for smaller business and um, you know then Enterprise Ireland, larger businesses, etc. Um, and that focus on import export. There is a need to make sure that, that social enterprises don't get pulled into that side, that they maintain a focus on both parts, on providing um, an economic um, dividend back to those who have established, but also providing a social dividend. So I think that's that's really that's a very key piece that needs to needs to be maintained. Um, I think as part of that, um, a continual review of where you're going and what your objectives are, um, because to my mind the two objectives need to be the social and the economic objectives need to be equal. Um, I think connecting with others is hugely important. So the, the, you know, the network, being a part of networks, um, whether that's food networks or whether that's social enterprise networks, that that's really important, that learning, that development. Um, and I think the need to um, innovate, the need to constantly be looking at what new ideas are there, what can be done different, um, what can you take from other sectors. At, in order to bring back and benefit the community. Um, and I think, you know, I think continually coming back to the roots and making sure that people from the original, from, from your um, community are involved and are driving and are running the project. No, I suppose another big lesson is um, the lack of funding and struggling to get there. But Luckily, with the local people here, uh, between CE workers, social workers, people coming in on placement that want to be here, and even volunteers that come in on a daily basis, and they'd help us on harvest day, they'd help us on different days. Now, even the volunteers are trained, they would have been come through the system anyway. So we're blessed with that element, that we have that loyalty from the local community. And only for them, we wouldn't be as far ahead as we are today, so. Um, well, I think, I think we can learn a lot from Valley Bay Greens. Um, they've certainly um, had such an impact in the local community, in the area. Um, you know, Valley Bay um, is traditionally, or has been and, and continues to be an area which is, uh, I suppose, on economically uh, deprived with high unemployment um, in the area. Um, so this enterprise has certainly brought a lot of people from the local community into training, which is certainly necessary in terms of 
uh, furthering their education and furthering their chances of employment, uh, both within Waterford and uh, within the region. So it has brought a lot um, to the table in that regard. There's coordinators that are involved, obviously, that are uh, residents in Ballybeg, but even more than that, in terms of interaction with the schools and in terms of interaction with the, with the community, they've really brought the community together. And it means so much to take a piece of land as well, which, has, which was traditionally derelict and had a lot of dumping on it, and to see what it is now is absolutely fantastic. So it really brings a, a lot of ownership um, by the community. Um, and that in turn feeds into the wider community in terms of their positivity towards, of course, the, the council and positivity towards projects like this. Um, future of Valley Bay Greens, I suppose the future of Valley Bay Greens depends really on, you know, what we can actually, what money we can actually raise. Um, we definitely won't have a problem supplying restaurants, we definitely won't have a, play, uh, a problem um, trying to sell ourselves um, because we're quite good at that um, so I suppose the future looks very bright for it I mean we have an additional two acres along with what we have here as tra in, in this, this training garden um, it's trying to get the funding just to move it on that, just that little bit um, and the more we progress um, the more tunnels we get up the quicker we can actually actually I suppose use the word grow because that's really what we're going to be doing um, so it's it's the future is very very bright um